This video is brought to you by Longoni Cues. Hi pool players, it's the Terminator. Welcome back to another episode of Terminator Tips. Are you struggling to make balls more consistently? Or are you having trouble with your position play? Or not running out the racks you could be running out? Well, it might just be that you're having an inconsistent pre-shot routine. And that's exactly what we're gonna break down in this video so I can help you to become a better player. It kind of works in three steps. You have the planning, the preparation, and the execution. So let's jump onto my pro start table now and show you how I break it down. So let's start with the first step, and that is actually to make a plan. What is it that you actually wanna do with the shot that's coming up at the table? Are you just gonna pocket the ball and take the next shot from wherever and be happy with it, or kind of surprised and disappointed? Or are you gonna take it a step further and try to play position for your next object ball. Of course, that's where we wanna to get to. We wanna make it as easy as possible to clear the table, play good position and get from one object ball to the next. So you have to start looking at some lines. And remember, we wanna to try to play into the line of position and not crossing the lines of position. I'm gonna post a link here in the video at the end so you can continue watching that one. That is very important study. So as a quick example here, we need to get from the one ball, down table for the two, and then to the three. The wrong way to play it is coming off this rail and directly down this path. Then we're crossing the line of position and there's a risk of getting no shot on the two or landing straight in and getting an extremely tough shot on the three. The correct way to play this shot is coming off two cushions, hitting side rail, then the other side rail and playing into the line of position for the two, guaranteeing you an angle to go to the three. So step one is good shot selection, finding high percentages and playing into the line of position. Let's move on to step two. Step two is very critical also, and this is to visualize the line of the cue ball. This is gonna kickstart the subconscious part of your brain and kickstart the feel that you need for the shot. Very, very important. So to take this example again, number one and two are kind of connected. You've determined the shot, the highest percentage play of position, and now it's time to visualize where you wanna hit the reel, where you wanna hit this reel, and where you kind of wanna end up in your position to kickstart that feel of the shot. There you see already, they're all linked together because number one links with number two and now number two links to three and that is to feel the shot. That's the biggest thing. Visualizing that line goes right into number three, feeling the shot. So we've made the plan, we visualize the line and now we're feeling the shot. That's the biggest key to good position play, feeling the shot. That's what gets you so nice and close to the next object ball and brings your game up to the next level. That brings us straight to number four, and that is tip position. You're feeling the shot, and now you're getting a signal of what kind of speed and spin you have to apply on the cue ball to get the desired result. And this is, of course, where you need some training. For example, the rock around the clock drill where I'll put a link here in the top, go check that one out later after this video as well. There's no shortcuts, no magic pill. This is where some training comes into place. You need to have trial and error to see where you're coming short, where it's coming along, how much spin, little more, little less. That is where you have to start putting in the work. Don't be fooled, the professionals went through the same process of trial and error many times before they got it right. So you can do the same thing. So we've determined our shot, we visualize the line, we feel it, and we have tip position. Now it's time to really start executing. For point number five, we're gonna take it slightly into the mental side. It could be that you're very nervous or that you've just made an error and you want to regroup, release some tension, and get back into the here and now. A really good tip is if you need it, Take an extra breath or take a walk around the table to get your heart rate down somewhat and really prepare for the shot. 
For the breathing part, I highly recommend breathing through your nose, down to your belly, take a count of six going in, hold for two and breathe out also through your nose to a count of eight. This releases some tension, relaxes your muscles and gets you in a better present moment. Could be like this one, for example, I just missed a long shot in my match. My opponent tried to play safe and he puts me right back onto the table with another tough shot. That could be a good moment to get rid of that negative stuff from the previous shot. Take a breath, maybe a walk, a sip of water and then get ready for this long one. Point number six is very critical also and this is to commit to the shot. It could be in the back of your mind that you think that this might not be the correct shot. Well, in this moment, it could be the correct shot for your skill level. If you can't do the other shots yet, don't go for it. And also, especially on safeties, it's very important to accept that sometimes you have to let the object ball leak into the open and you have to fully commit, for example, on the cue ball. Sometimes there's just no way to control both balls. You have to commit to trying to control one of them and that is your game plan. If you fall into the trap where you're still thinking about what could happen or what could go wrong or should I do this or that, there's a big chance you can mess up the shot. So commit fully to your shot selection and then it's time to go and pull the trigger. Point number seven could be super simple, but if you overlook it, it could have dramatic effects on the shot. Chalking. I use chalking when I think. Sometimes even if I have to execute a softer shot, subconsciously I'll chalk a little softer. And if I got to come with bigger strokes, I'll chalk a little more aggressive just to build my energy up to get ready for the shot. Chalking for me is thinking and a major part of my pre-shot routine. Step number eight is for me a two-stepper actually because first of all, I'm going to step into the line of the shot. I don't want to come walking over and doing this. I want to get behind the shot. Remember back to the basics, stance. I'm going to put a link here on the top. I want to get behind the shot and I want to determine where I need to hit the object ball. That's where I can get down on my line. For me, all the aiming systems out there are totally overrated. I use ghost ball and the rest is just feel and do. Practice. When I take your cue and somebody else's stroke, I might miss every ball. You have to aim how you're stroking and use the equipment that you have. You cannot just use one aiming system because the spin is going to affect everything, the deflection. I do not believe in all these aiming systems out there. Ghost ball and take it from there. So I'm going to use this shot with a little bit of outside spin. That means I have to hit the one slightly thicker. That's all I'm doing from the ghost ball point. And I'm going to get into the line. Remember, cue over the right hip, stepping into the line of the shot with low left. And I'm going to come down to the two. But first, of course, there's another step before that. If you're down on the shot, point number nine, and you're not quite sure or uncomfortable if this is the right thing that you're doing, if you haven't committed fully, get back up that's a big one if something's telling you i'm not sure i'm distracted get back up and start the process again it can take you two to three seconds to go through the whole routine again but if you're unsure and distracted big tip get up from the shot and start over number 10 is a massive point again that's your pre-strokes how are you addressing the cue ball when you're down on the object ball. My advice is if you're going to hit a soft shot, take smaller pre-strokes with a smaller bridge perhaps like the safety. All I have to do is roll it behind the six. There's no use for me to come with big pre-strokes because all I'm going to do is this. So it's just some smaller work and not these big things. However, if I need to come with a big power stroke, then it's the opposite. 
Let's say that I'm faced with this long one ball and I have to come all the way down table with low left for the two ball. That's a different stroke. I have to open up more. I have to build energy in my arm to get myself ready for this one. That would look something like this. Bigger pre-strokes. See, I'm already opening up, getting ready. I need that energy with low left. And then more opening, more energy on the pre-strokes. Point 11 is very interesting as well. I got a lot of questions about this one. What do you look at last? For me personally, it's the object ball. When I'm down on the shot, my eyes will go mixed between the cue ball and the object ball. I'm checking my tip position. I'm checking my aim. But on my final delivery, I'm looking at the object ball. So, for example, on this one, then I'm going back and forth, checking my tip position, checking my aim. Doesn't have to be written in stone. But lastly, I'm looking at the object ball. Try that out. And now it's time to finally pull the trigger. Number 12 is a little bonus tip. I give this to all my students on the Patreon page. This is actually for during the shot, not so much pre-shot, but this is where it goes wrong most of the time. People get up from the shot before the object ball is sometimes even in the pocket. I give them four letters, S, T, F, D. The first one's for stay, the last one's for down. You can fill in the other two. If you're gonna shoot a shot, always stay down on the ball, at least until it goes in the pocket. That way, you're going to stay in line. Your eyes are not going to come off the shot. Your body isn't. You're going to deliver the stroke better and make you a better player. So there's how I broke down my pre-shot routine. This doesn't have to be written in stone. Don't go robotic on this, but use it as a guideline. Don't just sidestep into the shot. Forget to aim. Forget tip position. Those are really important things. Stay down, finish the stroke, feel the shot. These are important things. Don't analyze until you paralyze. But I think for a beginner to maybe intermediate pool players, this can be very, very important because they could only have perhaps three to four steps and they're not aware of all the steps that are actually necessary to deliver a quality stroke. So watch this a few times, take some of the topics back onto the pool table with you and make yourself more consistent. There you go, pool fans. I really hope you got a lot of good information out of this video. Jump onto your pool table now. Remember, phones on flight mode and start practicing this stuff. Don't forget to check out all the other great content on the channel. There's playlists and videos for all kinds of topics. And remember, if you're finally ready to work on the most important part of your game, the mental side, Head over to the Terminator College and check out all the courses that are waiting there for you. Take care. See you in the next video.